What's up? I'm Freedy and I'm practicing handstands here on a 19 meter long slack line. But very recently, me and five friends of mine, we walked a line that's literally 100 times as long as this one, a 1.9 kilometer high line. And if you want to know more about that, check it out on this episode of How Not to High Line. So hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and this is... I'm Freedy Kuna. Kuna? Kuna? Akuna yeah. Matata? Kuna. Hakuna, okay. Hakuna Matata. Yeah, Hakuna. And so uh, he just walked on this piece of webbing, uh, but it was a little bit longer than this when he did it. How long was it? Uh, 1.9 kilometers. This is Y2K webbing. It's pretty cool. That white stuff in the middle is Dyneema. And then the outside is polyester, so you can walk on it and grab it and like that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, how long of sections did this come in? Uh, we had 50 meter sections connected to each other. And the backup is so into the main? Yeah, the backup, the backup is not sewn to the main, it's connected to the main and the next backup section with quick links, so everything is connected to everything. So if the main line were to fail, you only drop a little bit? Yeah, if the main line were to fail anywhere in the webbing, the whole system would only release 3 meters, so you wouldn't even lose that much height. Would you even know it failed? Yeah. Depends where it fails. I mean, um, <laughs> it will definitely make a difference in tension, right? The tension okay. will drop. But if you're far out, if it fails on one side, if you have an extension yeah. of one of the sections on one side, and then you're walking on the completely other side, you might not feel it. If there's wind, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. So um, name all the people that did the 1.9 kilometer line. Yes, yeah, so the 1.9 kilometer line that we just walked in Canada last week is a, a shared world record that um, a lot of people actually walked. So it was first walked by um, Anthony Ott, from, from Quebec, he's one of the Farfadé, amazing trick liners from Canada, you should really look them up and check out some of their moves. Next guy to send the line was Samuel Vollery, of course, very um, very big, amazing slack liner who also brought this incredible, incredible webbing, he sponsored this project. And then after Sam, actually while Sam was walking, Anthony Boulet, also from Canada, from British Columbia, started walking, so they kind of created a send train. So Anthony sent it after Sam, is that the first time that's you guys? That's the first ever send train that I know of. Yeah, definitely on such a big highland. Do you guys feel like that could have compromised Samuel's chance? Well, um, they managed to do it, so it's definitely possible. I tried it too on an, on another day, and I felt the other person like I felt falling, and you you can feel little vibrations, but it's possible to walk. How far away was the other person when you did it? Between like eight hundred and twelve hundred meters or so. <laughs> Let me finish that list. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so first That's Anthony so... Ott sent it, then Samuel Vollery, and then Anthony Boulet. It's so many people who sent yeah. this line, right? And then uh, Guillaume, Fon uh, Guillaume Fontaine, yeah. the other uh, one of the two Farfadet, also amazing highliner. And then Mia Noble sent it. So there's no more need to differentiate between <laughs> female and male world uh, highline world record. Girl power. Mia crushes at least as hard as any boy on, in the world, and I'm sure awesome. all other females can too. So um, Mia was the fifth person to send the line, and then after Mia, I got um, the last chance before it got stormy, and I also sent the line. How long does it uh, from the time you walk to the storm? Um, well, I walked the line as it was getting dark on the last uh, good weather condition day. Okay. And then the next morning it was windy and the line was all over the place. <laughs> wow. Did, how much time did it take you to cross? I crossed, I walked in one hour, 25 minutes. And what was um, the slowest time? Well, the slowest time was Mia with uh, two hours and five minutes, which is also still that's super fast. Like yeah, especially, that's... Especially for her. It's, we were all quite fast. Wow, that's pretty fast. That's not that much of a time difference. So the next day, you had a windstorm. How fast do you think the wind was? Uh, it's such a big line that the yeah. wind's not the yeah. same on every part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think according to the forecast, we had throughout the day, we had something with between 40 to 60 miles per hour, but definitely with gusts that um, might be higher than that. But I don't, huh. I don't really know how, how uh, strong the wind was in the end. Did you guys like calculate the, the surface area of that webbing? No, we didn't even try that. I feel like it, there's so many small factors and yeah. yeah. We just saw that the webbing was way up in the air. 1.9 kilometers is a lot, of, a lot of surface area. Yeah. So, definitely. wow. That, that's a concern I have about big lines is 
but it would take me so long to cross it that I would probably go yeah. start with great weather and end Definitely. with. So you had um, you had wind at the three kilom two point nine two point eight two point eight kilometer line. And where was that at? That was in Norway. That was actually um, yeah. yeah, like almost four weeks ago now. So one big yeah. project so after two, the other. Yeah, two point eight kilometer line. And what lake was it over? Um, I don't know the Norwegian name, it's like hard to pronounce, oh, okay. but the name uh, had the English nickname the Devil's Lake because it looked kind of black in some areas, I think. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful scenery for uh, the biggest highline ever rigged in the world. What was the sag on that big highline? The sag of the big, the 2.8 kilometer line in Norway, I think, was between 80 and 100 meters. <laughs> actually, actually, wait, it, it varied. We had, we had very different tensions. Um, on, the, on the very first day when there were little winds and Sam crossed the, the, the line, at some point he was like close to the water. And so people tensioned the line wow. as he was walking it. So he had, um, I think, over 150 meters of sag. Then the line had a lot more tension. Um, I tried a different day. I was maybe 40, 50 meters above the water. So I only had um, about 80 meters of sag. So it's the world's longest long line, not a high line. <laughs> or waterline, or, or waterline, water, but it's, like, long it's water everything, line. it's everything, it doesn't even matter anymore, it yeah. definitely feels exposed in the middle. <laughs> There's no difference now between a long line and a high line at that length. <laughs> no, I mean a long line would be scarier probably. <laughs> Way scarier. So how much of the 2.8 kilometers did you walk? I walked uh, roughly 2,200 meters on the 2,800 meter How long meter did that take you? Um, I don't know exactly how long it took me until I fell, it took me like a little over an hour. Okay. But um, the whole crossing of the line in Norway took me uh, two hours and five minutes, which is really funny. That's exactly how long it took Mia to send the 1.9. Were you super bummed when you fell? Or was it kind of expected because the wind picked up on you? Well, uh, when I was crossing the, the big highland in Norway, actually what you just described, your concern actually happened because I was starting in perfect conditions. The yeah. line was like a straight line in front of me, no wind at all. Okay. And after I made it through the uh, middle, the wind had picked up. And when I was after like 2,200 meters where I started fighting and screaming in the wind, it was like crazy, <laughs> like really strong gusts. And when I finally fell, I was mad, I was disappointed and sad because I felt cheated, right? It didn't yeah, feel yeah. like it was my fault. This is a life-changing experience. But this is fun. This is awesome. I regret nothing. Uh, people uh, later told me that on my, on the fall, they saw me even as I was uh, in the leash. They saw me like shift through the air twenty meters or so sideways. As as you were falling. Yeah, and that was after <laughs> starting walking in perfect conditions. So like, it's crazy how uh, how these big lines, um, how the conditions can change so quickly. So visually. Visually, like, highlining looks scary, but it's not, well, I mean, it's scary. It's, it looks dangerous, but it's not on a normal situation. Um, when I see a side sag bigger mm -hmm. than the length of my PR, <laughs> it looks like you're just doing this gigantic surf, 100 meters in both yeah. directions. Does it feel that way, or is it so freaking big, you just, you're only, you're only looking at the webbing in front of you, so is it even yeah. relevant? Um, you actually do, almost don't feel it. I mean, depends how quickly the wind gusts, uh, gusts change yeah. everything. But um, you you don't feel it until you get so close to the anchor that you have reference pro uh, points okay. beneath you. If you're way out there in the middle and you move sideways, like it happens kind of slowly, especially in the middle. Yeah. So you don't really feel it. You just slowly shift your balance and you like work with it. Are you ever inverted? Inverted was that. Uh, so instead of. So the wind is pushing you up oh, at yeah. more force than you're pushing it down. Oh, for sure. The, the wind pushes you everywhere. You, you, you can be lifted just as well as uh, going down when the wind drops. That's great. Uh, sideways, for sure. Is it, do you have humping? Yes, we have a lot of humping, uh, what we call yeah. the, the back and forth, the yeah. spring back on the big highlights. I like humping. Yeah, totally. <laughs> humping is a legit term. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's uh, quite strong on the big highlands, on, although on these big highlands, because they were on such lightweight, low stretch webbing, it's actually not as strong as say a one kilometer polyester webbing or, or like a, even a 500 meter nylon webbing with yeah. no wind nylon will move, move back over. and forth stronger than those big high lines. But it's always there. For were sure. they both rigged on Y2K? Yes, they were both rigged on the same webbing and a, a very big part of it was actually the exact same webbing. Like oh, we obviously oh, okay. we used those same kilometers. It's a lot of webbing. So the wind picked up on the 1.9 kilometer. Yeah. Um, and you had to cut it. You couldn't derig it. 
we uh, we had to cut it because what happened um, there's there's videos out there that you can watch too with the description and everything from Selectivity and Slackline Montreal. But in a nutshell, what happened the the back of loops were moving um, so strong under the wind gusts that they cut through the main line because it is after all it's still it's high tech it's very it's a rather sharp webbing so it cut th through those uh, vibrations from the wind it cut through the main line. Um, causing the main line to snap and then it extended a couple meters and then it's on the backup. So we didn't lose the webbing. How'd you know that? Because well, we nobody's on the line at the time. No, no, no. It was yeah, way too yeah, windy. Yeah, yeah. And we had a dyno, a dyno in it and yeah. we observed the dyno. Like, it was okay. way beyond the tension where we would allow people to step on the line. But so we get, uh, we get to the anchor like to check on the line and we see that it's already happened in a bunch of places and it's on the, like, the, the backup sections which used to be big loops we're now kind of the main line, and the old main line is cut in one uh, place and just dangling down 50 meter wind dampener. Okay, yeah, oh, you see the tails flapping in the wind. Yeah. What would happen if it wasn't attached every 50 meters? Like, yeah, if that had if been. The main well, would just be flat, like. Actually, um, my first thought would be that then it would be completely cut, but I don't really know because. Had the main not been atta attached, had we not had those sections, then the the entire line, I'm talking the entire 1.9 yeah. kilometer, would have been untaped. Because that's what happened first. First oh, the line, yeah. first the yeah, line loses its tapes, and then it's like a 50 meter loop, 50 like yeah, yeah. big loops. So if it had been like an old school like main line backup, yeah. completely separated thing, and which, they're oscillating, which we wouldn't have done because that would have been that would have been crazy, not safe. Yeah. Um, I think the whole line would have been untaped and it would have been even more over the place and then it still might have cut, the backup still might have cut the main line. I, yeah, I because they, I've seen that twirl yeah. around. It would have been the worst. Well, to, just to really quickly wrap up the thought earlier, the reason why we cut it was because we didn't want this thing to happen more often, right? It, was, yeah. it happened on six sections. So six sections were now the backup and the main line was cut and hanging loose. We realized that that would, was going to happen more and more yeah. if we had because um, the line was in the wind, wind was still strong, and in order to save as much of those of yeah. that setup, we cut the webbing, knowing that with the side sag it had, it would have been it would have uh, been blown towards the forest, and we could have just we could have picked it up, and then that's what happened. So it was what did it, what did it look like when you cut it? Like what did it just snap real fast? Or? It was actually uh, really cool to watch, really beautiful. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the organizer of the event, Danny Bouchard, amazing guy. He uh, had the honor of cutting the line, so he, um, we put a knife on a stick, okay. and he literally he just had to touch it. He just put the knife on the thing, and immediately how many kilonewtons did it have? At that point, um, at, at that point, we didn't know because the dyno it was everything was on the backup, and the main line was connected to the oh. dyno. But we know that before all this happened, when the wind already went crazy, we had um, 17, 18 kilonewtons or so, which was wow. which was already the tension where we would have said, okay, this is um, the limit for our project. This is yeah. not safe anymore. Nobody get on the island. Because so, this is, what, only 36, 40? It's only double that, right? No, no, this is um, something, I don't know, I would so, have to look it up. It's like something 27 to 29 um, kilonewtons in the loops. The loops okay. are the weakest point. Yeah, and yeah. those have something just under 30 kilonewtons. I'm not sure. Wow, right. and it was at 18. Wow. Yeah, so the forces were huh. really high with the wind. Then when we cut the line... It had it already had like like a couple hundred meters of, of, of side sag, so it was it was um, it didn't like fall to the ground. It was blown up and sideways, and like very slowly. I think it was in the air for another minute or two, then settled on the trees that were around the mine that we rigged over. That's crazy. <laughs> and then in the end, that way the rigging went a lot faster. <laughs> Good shit! Did you get send anxiety? I got hella sending anxiety on that uh, on that walk because I had a <laughs> failed attempt before that or failed whatever you want to call it yeah. I had a crossing with one catch where Mia was walking behind me and when I started Anthony was in front of me 
and I just caught the line like a, a hundred meters or so from the anchor. You had three no people repair. on the line at the time? At one moment there were three people <laughs> on the line, but then I think Anthony got to the anchor pretty quick and then it was just Mia behind me and me and then I caught the line, I think there were maybe wind gusts, maybe I just wasn't yeah. focused, but yeah, yeah. then I crossed the whole thing with one catch and I was very annoyed with myself, frustrated, why did I have to catch, it was a good attempt, but then Luckily, I got one final attempt before uh, it got stormy, just before it got dark, or as it got dark. Yeah. And then I just, I just walked it with all the pressure, uh, giving me energy, and just, I just focused very hard and um, managed to use that send pressure to. Um, That's crazy. So now you share the. Uh, well, so so a lot of people are talking about the difference between walking, um, the, the length that people walked. Yeah. Out on the on the Norway line versus yeah, the send distance versus on, send the first, record. Yeah, yeah distance sure. versus send record. So basically, you you don't you don't have the distance one. You share you you share it within like what a uh, hundred or three hundred meters with. Uh, so in, in Norway, yeah, we yeah in, in slacklining we're still we're still all about sending right. Yeah, we yeah. want to walk anchor to anchor and then that's the high line yeah. or slackline whatever world record. But in Norway, um, both Quirin. Sam and me, we all walked more than um, 2,100 meters okay. continuous in one direction, okay. which, um, which, as far as I know, is longer than the longest continuous tightrope walk. So we got that. Yeah. It's like some, whatever, you That's can call it awesome. some kind of world record, but I think it's, it's a cool sign that slacklining has gone beyond tightrope walking in a way. Can't believe they can rig a cable that long. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's already so difficult with a slackline. I don't even so know. So that. That's cool. And then you got the... There you share the world record for the send. Yeah. And then you have the free solo world record. Uh, that too. Yeah. yeah. And how long is that one again? 110 meters. Yeah, 110 meters. Are you, not that I want you to, are you ever going <laughs> to? <laughs> is, are, okay. Nobody ever thought El Capitan would get free soloed. Mm -hmm. Are one mile long high lines possible to free solo if you are, can predict that there's good weather? Yes. Absolutely. And even if there's bad weather, you can technically sit down and clip in or something. Yeah. I'm not saying that I want to do that. I'm not saying that I want other people to solo big, big highlands. I don't want that at all. But it's absolutely possible, it's, yeah. humanly possible, 100%. It doesn't blow you so hard, so unpredictably that... You would the, want to do it in really good conditions. Yo, find you, a spot yeah. where you have <laughs> yeah, no shit. no wind. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then it would be um, very possible. You would just have to train and um, be very good at catching and then would, it would, would be just like the wire walkers. The wire walkers were most of the time free solo. They just had their poles, which made the whole balance game a little easier, but still, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. unattached. And so, for sure, we could do it too, but it'll take some more years of development, I think. Yeah, because that would, you'd want that really pr predictable. Yeah, you'd want everything predictable and you'd want to be crazy solid on the line. Yeah, yeah take crazy the solid. Off, which, yeah, you should always be. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Thanks, man. Good job. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Yep. And uh, I hope I get to experience what it's like to be on a mile-long highline someday. Oh, for sure you will. Yeah. I, I know you will. Really? Dude, so proud of you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Just want to say a quick thank you to the amazing organizers and the teams in Norway and in Canada who put together these world record projects. And if you want to rig a huge highline, then don't try it on your own. Group up with other people and combine the energy of your friends with your energy to create more energy for big projects. Get involved.